Hi guys, today I'm going to do a Mint installation. I haven't done one of these in a long time. So Mint Linux is a great operating system for anyone new or a veteran to, to the Linux environment. So if you're looking to install a Linux operating system on a laptop because you want to give it a try, Mint Linux is a great option, especially for beginners. It offers tons of user-friendly functionality. The OS installation is very simple to go through. So just keep watching and I'll walk through how the installation works, what you need to do, all the way from making a USB device bootable through the installation, and how to get started using some of the uh, packaging tools. So just keep watching, and you'll be able to use, start using Linux Mint within a few minutes. Super fast, super easy install. So just keep watching, get you started in your Linux environment. So the first thing we're going to go do is go to the Linux Mint website, linuxmint.com, and they have a download link. So the first thing it's going to show you is the latest distribution, Sarah, Linux Mint 18, and there are a few different options depending on the desktop of your preference. So if you know you have 32-bit or 64-bit processor, most systems are 64-bit nowadays, um, to go ahead and download the 64-bit odds are it will work. I'm going to go ahead and download KDE. That is a desktop, a very popular desktop interface. But if you click on the link there, it will give you a small preview of what the desktop might look like in case you prefer a different desktop environment. So I'm downloading my Linux Mint 18 Sarah KDE desktop 64-bit. If you have an older laptop, you might have a 32-bit processor. Next, we're going to go ahead and download Pendrive Linux. I've been using this for such a long time. It's a great tool for making a USB device or USB dongle memory, flash memory, uh, bootable. So if you have anything, usually at least two gigs would be good in this case, uh, USB device, go ahead and plug that in. So we're going to go ahead and make that little device bootable. And again, you want to be very careful. You don't not overwrite files. So you click on download there. It's a very fast download. It's just a very tiny file. So once it's downloaded, we got our ISO, Linux Mint ISO downloaded. We're going to go ahead and run our universal USB installer. And it's going to bring up the little utility that's going to make our USB device bootable. It's great because it actually has this little drop down menu that makes it just so easy to um, start using this tool to make a bootable USB. So we choose our distribution and we select our ISO. At this point, make sure you have your USB drive um, uh, plugged into your system. And when you select them, be sure there are no files on there you want. You can do it where you do not overwrite the files and reformat the USB device. So just be very careful here. And you want to make sure if you do have files on there, don't overwrite it. So I'll have the Linux Mint OS installer plus your files. So I don't know if you, that's necessarily something you want. Or you can just completely overwrite it. That's usually what I do. But again, be careful that you have the right device selected. So once you click OK, it's going to go ahead and start copying all your uh, Linux Mint uh, installation files and configuration files, any packages that was in the ISO, it's going to copy it over to the USB device. So this part usually does take a few minutes, so it's probably a good time to go get a cup of coffee and go ahead and come back and we can go ahead and start doing the installation of our Linux Mint. It's very easy to install, very fast. So we'll get to that as soon as the USB device has been created. So the next thing we're going to do is take that same USB device and we're going to plug it into the computer we want to install our Linux Mint operating system on. So if you have your old laptop, we're going to go ahead and power that on. You should be able to bring up a boot menu. Sometimes you're going to need to hit a hotkey, sometimes escape, F2, I see shift and a character. So depending on what laptop, you might need to look it up, the manual. So in my case, it was an F9, we'll bring it up the boot menu. So once you do that, you're going to select the device, your USB device from the boot menu. So once it starts booting off the USB device, you can see this menu pop up. It's going to automatically start booting into Linux Mint. It's going to, it's a really nice 
uh, installation the way they set it up because it's not going to make you install it right away. It's going to bring you to a desktop where you're actually going to see a live session of Linux Mint running. So you're going to be able to use it. And this is before anything's written to your hard drive. So this is a very, very safe way of testing out this product. Or if you just want to use it because you want to do something, you don't want anything written to your hard drive or you want to make sure you don't do anything on your file system, your local computer. So this is completely run off the USB device and your hard drive, your system memory. So again, nothing is written to your storage device or your hard drive. So it's known as a live session. So it has a full browser. You can actually configure it for your email. But again, remember once you restart this, everything is lost. Everything is gone. So until you actually install the operating system, it's not going to do anything. So if you want to go to Facebook, for example, log in, maybe check something, but you don't want anything cached to the local hard drive. This is something you could use to kind of do that. Um, so once you've decided that you want to install it because you like what you see and it has so much, you go here and click install the system firmly to your hard drive. It's going to bring up your installation wizard and it's going to do it right from your live session. So once that comes up, it's going to bring, ask you a few very basic questions and perform the installation. And again, this is such an easy installation. So it's going to detect what region of the world you are. It's going to detect your keyboard. So it's going to detect your language. So it knows that I'm uh, in an English speaking country. Now it's asking if you want to install third party software. This might be useful depending on the drivers of your laptop. You might want to check this because it'll make it easier depending on some of the hardware on your computer. Next, we're going to go through and check our disk configuration. Um, so this is where you want to be careful. So if you're doing a dual boot and you have Windows running, I usually like to back up my files on Windows first just in case there's a problem. So whatever your system you're using, make sure you have a backup. If you're doing a dual boot, I would try to back up your files just to be on the safe side. Odds are nothing's going to happen, but just to be on the safe side, I would always recommend that. In my case, I'm going to use the entire hard drive that I'm doing this installation on. I'm doing it on a virtual machine here. But if you, again, if you have a dual boot, you go ahead and configure it in such a way where it actually does the dual boot here. So you want to make sure you have your Windows partition and then your Linux partition. And it's going to use the Linux boot manager if you're doing a boot, dual boot. It does also give you the option to encrypt your drive. Um, if you're worried about security and someone accessing your files, if your computer's stolen, that's something to look at. Again, just be careful in those cases because I would back up your files. I see files that are becoming encrypted that cannot be decrypted. So it's showing me a quick breakdown of how my file system is going to be divided up. So I'm going to have uh, using logical value manager. This is useful for resizing this later. So it is a software uh, partition. So it's not a hard partition on the drive. So it's using a logical value manager tool. So that allows you to resize the drive very easily. Um, so once I see that my partitions have been configured and at minimum, you need slash swap and slash boot. So the three partitions that are needed, you need to select your time zone. So I have the nice map here. You go ahead and click whatever region of the world you're in. It automatically detects your keyboard, so it's pretty good. It will automatically detect it, but there are a number of keyboard options. If it gets it wrong, you click that down at, uh, pull down menu and select which region of the world you're from. Then we're going to select our user info. If you notice down there at the bottom, it says copying files. So while we're doing this, it's actually doing the installation. So I noticed a few different Linux uh, installers are doing this now where it actually asks you questions while it's doing the installation. Some of the questions that I normally would ask on restart at the end of the installation, it does it during the installation now. It's nice because it does save you a little bit of time. So you can get in here, you can type in uh, your user. So this is gonna be the only account on here that you'll be prompted to log in with. So there will be the root account always exists. It has to exist. For the system to run properly, you must have a root account. But this, uh, for security purposes, they will always try to get you to use your non-admin account. So in this case, I'm creating my uh, Atani account on my system. I'm setting a password, and this account will have pseudo rights. So that means I will have access to a uh, super user, so pseudo. So you can go ahead and type in your username, your full name, your password, and whatever you want the computer to be called. 
And again here, then you notice there's another encryption option to encrypt your home directory, if that's an option that you're interested in, instead of your entire partition. So this actually might be a better choice if you're just worried about um, your personal files being decrypted. And something to think about is when you do decrypt, it does take a little bit of overhead encrypting and decrypting. So once the installation is done, you go ahead and restart your system. It will bring you back up to your brand new Linux Mint installation, just as easy as that. You notice here it shows the one user, even though root is there, it will try to get you always to use your non-admin account. So here's my Tanya user, we'll type in my password, go ahead and log in. And now I'll be able to use my brand new Linux Mint uh, desktop. So this is going to look exactly the same as the live session that it booted you into. So if you were using a live session, it's going to look identical to that, which is great. So it has a great um, also packet manager. So we'll be able to do some installations right away with any additional software that you might be interested in. So here is the welcome screen. So the welcome screen has some nice uh, options here. So if you need to install some drivers, install your apps, go to chat room, forums, check out the new features and documentation. You go ahead and click here. It'll take you right to that information. So if you click on apps, it'll actually take you down to the app store where we can get started looking at some of the apps that um, Mint Linux can easily install. So here is where I was talking about it's prompting you for um, the admin account. So, so this is the sudo account password. So it's going to go ahead and open up the app store. And once it does that, we'll be able to search by category and look for whatever you might need. So if you need like a special mail tool or if you want to play some games or if you're a developer, you click on programming and install some IDEs for uh, your programming environment. So again, you can go ahead and look through here. So if you like Vim or Nano, which are some really popular ones, or LibreOffice, some of these are actually already installed. So you might want to look at what's already installed first. You go ahead and install that. And other than that, enjoy your new Linux Mint installation. Tons of tools are already installed and ready to go. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're able to use Linux Mint it's in your environment. It's a great operating system to get started using, and it's really a user-friendly environment. So just enjoy yourself, and I'll see you guys next time with Scrub to Get Updates. Bye, guys.